Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Key Concepts Associated with Leadership. This is Lecture C, Motivation and Group Dynamics. The objectives for this unit, Key Concepts Associated with Leadership, are to describe and discuss the role of authority in the HIT environment, compare and contrast recognized versus expert authority in context with the healthcare environment. Explain creativity's role in healthcare. Explain the importance of recognizing and managing the cross-cultural organization. Define emotional intelligence. List and describe the four competencies in social intelligence. Define motivation in the context of the current HIT environment. Distinguish between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Describe the role of motivation in group dynamics. What do you already know about motivation? Let's begin with the definition. To motivate means to induce or incite someone to take action. Leadership, as we know, is about getting people to move in the direction that you want them to, or to take action. Not surprisingly, motivation as a concept has been written about extensively in psychology journals. So how does all this apply to our study of leadership? Let's look at two types of motivation, intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic motivation is the drive to do or accomplish something because of the enjoyment or sense of satisfaction that it brings rather than because of a reward or external benefit. An example of intrinsic motivation might be finishing a degree or graduating from high school. There is no law that says you have to do it. You do it because it matters to you. Now let's look at extrinsic motivation. Perhaps you conducted a science experiment in a college psychology class with lab rats. If you use cheese to reward the rat for navigating a wooden maze, the rat typically learned how to navigate the maze. Take away the cheese, and the rat only sees a complicated wooden box. This is extrinsic motivation. The rat is motivated to perform for a potential reward, cheese. Doing something for an external reward like money or cheese is an example of extrinsic motivation. So, how can you apply an understanding of the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation to the arena of healthcare technology? Motivation can have multifaceted meanings related to healthcare IT implementations. Most healthcare organizations will implement an EMR or EHR in the next few years because they think it's the right thing to do. It will help increase patient safety and may even save lives. Because of the frenzy of activity and potential gain from the Medicare and Medicaid incentives to adopt EHRs, some organizations will focus on the external rewards or monetary incentives provided by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. This is not a bad thing. Being in the black financially is a very good thing. Just realize that different organizations may be motivated in two different ways, intrinsically and extrinsically, and this will often drive their implementation strategies. The perceptive healthcare IT leader, whether this is a project manager or CIO, must have a firm grasp of intrinsic and extrinsic motivations and balance them appropriately. This is true from two perspectives. The first perspective involves being able to see what motivates employees. Introducing new technology will bring significant changes to their workflow. How will you motivate them to participate fully in the adoption of new technology? They'll need to understand the benefits of a system in order to buy into it and support its use. Motivating individuals may mean offering different incentives to different groups of individuals who will be working on an implementation. For instance, physicians and nurses may receive a bonus if their project comes in under budget or under schedule. 
The second perspective involves being able to understand what motivates the leaders of the healthcare organization. They may be motivated by achieving positive public opinion, having a healthy bottom line, or improving patient safety in their organizations. Whatever the reason, it is always good to seek an understanding of what's driving the organization's leaders. In either case, it will be important to move both groups that you are managing in the direction that you want. Although different things may motivate them, alignment of these two groups will be crucial for the success of any project. Let's get back to the science of motivating people. To reiterate, motivation has been studied extensively by almost every industry, automotive, financial, education, and nearly every time, the results of these social science experiments related to what motivates people are the same. Extrinsic motivators do not tend to work. How does that research result translate into practical advice for managers? The typical incentives used to manage employees are shown on the slide. In a talk that Dan Pink, a former White House speechwriter, gave to an audience in London, he suggested that the management approach works well if you're looking for compliance from your staff. In other words, taking the approach of do this for me or our company is better than we will pay you to be loyal. However, Mr. Pink also suggests that if what you're after is more engaged employees or employees who want to do the right things for the right reasons, it may mean letting go of control rather than maintaining a tight grip on it. In other words, when employees or team members feel like you're having to manage them, they're more reluctant to buy in and make original contributions. It's as if you and you alone are running the show. If you want engagement, then promoting self-direction is always going to work better. Here's a great example. Google gives their employees 20% of their time to work on projects they think are interesting but may not have anything to do with their work. Gmail, as a concept, was hatched during one employee's 20% independent work times. Although the Google example is interesting to think about, healthcare caregivers have all answered a call to work in this challenging field. They have gone through years of nursing or medical or allied health education and training, only to work long hours in sometimes stressful situations. They did this because they felt a calling to help make other people's lives better. Healthcare workers are usually intrinsically motivated to help people, and this is generally how you must motivate them in return. If nurses know that their work in helping implement the new system will indirectly help their patients, they'll be a lot more willing to come to the database design decision meeting. Pitching the implementation not from a this is what we've been told to do perspective, but from a what we're doing may save a patient's life by flagging drug-drug interactions perspective, clinicians will be more likely to listen. The take-home message here is you should reiterate the reasons for meaningful use and its intended outcomes for direct patient care early and often. IT or technical staffers on an implementation, while they may be in the healthcare industry, are typically more motivated by doing work that creates improvements in communication between information systems. They bear the brunt of the work in a system implementation and have very specialized skills. They also work long hours and are also intrinsically motivated to solve problems simply because they're there. To the IT worker, something that is wrong can and should be fixed. They may focus on this problem-solving aspect of the implementation and lose sight of why the system is being implemented in the first place. This is where it may be wise to educate the IT implementation staff about end goals. The goal of the ONC HIT Standards Committee is to create systems that can talk to one another and that will help improve patient care. 
Likewise, discussing the possibility of a health information exchange being created as a result of the team's effort may be another motivator. Help the IT workers to understand the end goal and to look beyond just the goal of solving a specific technical problem. Finally, healthcare executives are usually motivated to improve their patients' health and satisfaction, thereby improving their bottom line. They may question their capital or operational investment in the EHR. It's expensive. It's driving up their operational budgets. This is the old adage of no margin, no mission, reflecting the idea that patient satisfaction is desirable, but financial survival is a necessity. It will be your job as the implementation manager to reinforce the idea that their decision will have a payoff. Without being a Pollyanna, you would probably do well to remind them from time to time that they are participating in an unprecedented time of IT adoption in this country. This is the ultimate long-range planning session with potentially big payoffs. This reflects the idea of no mission, no margin. Let's talk about group dynamics. Given that there are several units that deal with team dynamics and teamwork, this topic will be visited here only briefly, but it is important to mention in the context of emotional intelligence and leadership. Warren Bennis, a well-known author on leadership, once said of groups, great groups are vivid utopias. They are a picture of the way organizations ought to look, sort of like a set of aspirations and a graphic illustration of what's possible. We are pretty sure that Warren Bennis has never undergone an IT system replacement at midnight on a Saturday night. However, note that he said great groups are like vivid utopias. All groups are not great, but once you've been a part of one, you compare all others to that experience. Groups must be carefully managed, or they can take on a life of their own. They can be productive and democratic, or volatile and repressive. In either case, emotional intelligence will play a big role, both in your observations of others' behavior and your own behavior. It's important here when talking about group dynamics to make a distinction between groups and teams. Teams tend to have a common purpose, whereas groups function to serve a more intermittent purpose. What are the other differences between a group and a team? Groups usually come together to share information and to help other people do their jobs. Typically, the focus of the members of a group is on their own individual goals, not the collective. An example of a working group is an interdisciplinary group that determines pay raises for a group of employees. This is a working group and not a team because it only needs to meet for a specific purpose during a brief period of time. The membership may be comprised of different stakeholders, for example, finance and human resources, and may even break down into sub-working groups to achieve their end goal. Finance will want to ensure that raises do not exceed the budget for the year, and human resources will want to ensure that organizational policies are not being overlooked. A working group leader typically discusses the plan and assigns work to the individuals and holds them accountable for their part. Teams, on the other hand, tend to work toward a collective and common goal. Committees, councils, and task forces are not teams because each individual member's goals may be very different. Teams, on the other hand, tend to work toward a collective and common goal. They are generally convened to accomplish an overarching organizational goal. A team that is formed for the purposes of an implementation may have a life well beyond the go-live of the new system, whereas committees, councils, and task forces come together to accomplish one or more intermittent goals and can be altogether disbanded or convened on an as-needed basis. There are often shared leadership roles with a focus on the collective product. 
Whether we like it or not, we will all spend countless hours this year in project meetings. It is wise to hone in on your emotional intelligence skills in this setting. Meetings are a good way to use your group dynamic skills because there are so many things going on in every meeting. There's the declared subject matter of the meeting. One person could have a lot riding on the outcome of the meeting and may be hypersensitive to decisions made. Another person in the group might be tired or otherwise disengaged. Still, other people may be chronic aggressors who will take issue with anything that's said because of who's saying it. Added to this is the pressure of all eyes on the facilitator. While this person is typically a neutral party, the way the facilitator responds to the group is key. It's no wonder that meetings are a common place where people's motivations show up. There are three points that have helped many a project manager to manage group dynamics in meetings. First of all, set the agenda as far ahead of time as you can. Start with an agenda that has the item, the purpose of this meeting is to blank. The expected outcome of this meeting is to blank. With this type of transparency, nobody should be in doubt about what will go on in the meeting. When you set the agenda, determine which of the agenda items are worth an argument and which may need to be tabled to a later meeting. Rehearse your reactions, if needed, to the naysayers or strong-willed among the group gathered. Another way to diffuse attention as the sole leader is to appoint another facilitator. Do this ahead of time and go over the agenda with this person. Allow them to ask questions along the way. Finally, group meetings are a good way to encourage dialogue. But decisions made in meetings are like water in a sieve. As soon as the group leaves the room, people tend to forget what was said and hence may not follow up on what was agreed upon. As the leader, send out a meeting summary with action items as soon as you can upon returning from the meeting. Ask for contributions from the group to improve or correct the document. Then hold people accountable for their action items. This concludes key concepts associated with leadership. In summary, authority and creativity are important facets of leadership in the health IT environment. Successful HIT leaders have developed emotional intelligence well suited to the goal-driven healthcare environment. Motivating colleagues and managing group dynamics are other key competencies of the successful health IT leader.